But I think that there's some movements in this world that are really pushing these groups into this into this wicked sin. I'm going to call it one movement in specific. It's the movement Black Lives Matter. Right. Now this this movement is such a fraud. It's such a fake. It's such a phony. Yeah. You know, and if there was a group of people that said, "Hey, I think the black community is struggling. I want to help them." That's great. I think that's wonderful. You know, if there's a group of people that want to help white people or want to help Asians or want to help Hispanics, who cares? That's great. If you want to help people, that's great. But that's not what this movement's about. So I went to their website, blacklivesmatter.com. And right there in the front, they have this big link that says, What We Believe. Like they're a church or something. You know, you go to most New Evangelical churches today, and you can't even hardly find what they believe. It's yeah. like hidden in some corner oh, yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. You go to these movements, and it's like right there in the front. It's like, What We Believe. So you click on it. Now about 12 different categories. So I looked at a couple of their categories. The first category is called Queer Affirming. It says, We are committed to fostering a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking, or rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless he or she or they disclose otherwise. Now what in the world does that have to do with being black? Yes. That's a fraud. Right. But then it gets worse. Not only are they queer affirming, they have a whole separate category for transgender affirming. It says we are committed to embracing and making space for trans brothers and sisters to participate and lead. We are committed to being self-reflexive and doing the work required to dismantle side gender privilege. That meaning, you know, when you're born a male, the doctor said you're a male. That's what side gender privilege is. It says an uplift black trans folk. Again, what does mutilating your body and being some sodomite have to do with being black? Right. Nothing. And you know, that's what they want to do. They want to equate, you know, race with being a sexual deviant, right. which has nothing to do with each other. I don't even believe in race. But even if you just, we're going to categorize people and say, you know, people that have darker skin, that has nothing to do with being a sexual deviant. Right. But it's all over this page. It has nothing to do with even wanting to help the black community. You look at the collective value, they're saying all black lives matter regardless of, and it says perceived sexual identity, gender identity, gender expression, economic status, ability, disability, religious beliefs, immigration or status. Why are the first three about sexual deviancy? I mean, usually when you go on a list, it says, you know, age, sex, race, you know, whatever. And they kind of add those last politically correct ones at the end. But they have them right at the front. And they say actual or perceived sexual identity. I mean, some confused transgender freak has collective value as a precious child? No. It says black women has another category. We are committed to building a black women affirming space, free of sexism, misogyny, and male-centeredness. Well, there's your feminism. Again, what does feminism have to do with being black? I mean, this site has nothing to do with trying to lift up the black community. But this is where I really have a problem. Because then they have a category called black families. And this is where they're trying to solve the problems. They say, we are committed to making our spaces family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We are committed to dismantling the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts that require them to mother in private even as they participate in justice work. You know what they're saying? They're saying they don't want a mom and dad to be in the home anymore. They are committed to dismantling the patriarch practice of this, of this country. They don't want a man-run country. They don't want a man-run state. They don't want a man-run home. They want to dismantle that. Well, that's only going to hurt the black community. Right. That's only going to make these kids drive into the gangs and into murder and into fornication and wickedness even more. Right. And you say, well, why are you bringing this up? Well, if you look at the percentages, in 2011, it said that 35% of gang members were black. And you say, well, that's not that big of a number. Yeah, but unfortunately, the, back, the black population in America is only 12%. That means they're like three to four times more likely than any other person. And you know, it's not because they're black that they're more likely. It says in the census.gov in 2011 that they were only 12%. So I don't believe that that statistics changed that much in the last five years. It says in the CDC in 2014, the percentage of births considered non-marital, meaning that the parents weren't married when they had the baby in the hospital. It says of white people, 29%. So about almost one-third of babies born to white families were not of a mom and a dad that were married. It was from a result of fornication. That's horrible. That's wicked. 
That's evil. One out of three almost, but in the black population, 71%. Almost three out of four children born in this world black are not from parents that are married. And you say, well, what, what's the problem with that? Well, if you look in 2014, in the same year, of single parent families. So this is children living in a single parent family. Of white people, it's 25%. So about the same statistic, about one in four. And that's horrible. That's, a, that's, that's, that's awful just in its own right. But in the black community, it's 66%. Almost two-thirds of every black child does not have a mother and a father. How in the world are they going to hearken in the instruction of their father? Right. How in the world are they going to, you know, not forsake the law of their mother when they don't even have one? Right. That's why these kids are driven into these gangs. That's why these kids are driven into sin. Why? Because of fornication? Right. Because of wickedness? Why? You know what the Black Lives Matter should do? It should go out and preach the gospel. It should go into these black communities and get them into church. It should give them the wisdom of God. It should teach them the Bible. You know, the Bible says... Go, uh, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You know how you're going to help people? Bring him in the church. Right. You know how you're going to change people's lives? Bringing them into church. Getting in the Bible. Getting to the fear God. That's how you're going to change those communities. That's how you're going to help these people. But when they want to dismantle the family unit, when they want to lift up sexual deviancy, that's just going to hurt the communities worse. Yeah. 